Before we begin, I just want to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional ancestral unceded territories of the First Nations and Native American peoples. Here where I am in Vancouver, these peoples are the tsleil Squamish, Stolo, and Musqueam nations. But I know where many of you are, you're on the land of other nations. Always, but especially during this time, let us remember our connection to our sisters and brothers from these nations and pray for the day in which we might be together in right relationship. Welcome, welcome to Living Interfaith. Know that the whole of you is welcome. You're not asked to leave who you are in your own home. Please bring who you are in to this community today. But what you are asked to remember that the, uh, is that the others in this community have brought who they are in with them as well. And all, all of goodwill are welcome. Before we get started, I just have a few announcements to share. Uh, all of these are things that will take place over Zoom because it's not yet safe to get together in person, at least here. Uh, this coming Wednesday uh, from 7 to 8.30 Pacific Standard Time, PM Pacific Standard Time, our friend and Simon Fraser uh, professor, Harold Rosen, is going to be leading our first gathering in the World Scripture Series. So I'm very excited about this. We've set it up with him where it's kind of like a Bible study, but every month we focus on a scripture from a different religion. So we're going to cover nine religions over the course of 10 months. Only Harold can do that because he has uh, three master's degrees and he teaches world religions and everything relating to these things um, at Simon Fraser and online and in various places. So we're very lucky he'll be doing this with us. Um, and so I know this first meeting on Wednesday is going to be an overview of what he sees as some of the connections. And then after that, every month, it'll be a different religion, uh, basically going over most of the next year. Uh, there are There is a cost for this just to cover Harold's expenses because he is a professor. So it's, if you want to do the whole 10 month series, it's $100 upfront, or you can stop in for any of the sessions, any one or any multiple of those, and it's $12 a session just to pay for his materials and his time. So if you're interested, you can let me know in the chat or you can email me or contact me or anyone else here who knows how to get a hold of me. So that would be great. And I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, also later this month, I've set up a compassionate listening training, uh, which was actually instigated by David and then Bryn, um, our community member who sadly couldn't make it today. Um, so the training, so that we're not stuck on Zoom for the entirety of the day, it's gonna be uh, two Saturdays in the afternoon so from 1 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's like three hours one day and three hours the next Saturday um, at the same time. And the second one will just pick up where the first one leaves off so we can keep going and working on our skills. And uh, so th again, there is a cost for that just for my time because that's a big training. Uh, so it'd be $50 for one or $100 for both. Or if you'd like to come and if that uh, would not work for you, just let me know um, and we can figure something out because I'd really like to have you all there. And, uh, and incidentally, compassionate listening is what I used to teach um, in Israel and the West Bank, uh, trying to do peace, uh, peace work, uh, bringing Israelis and Palestinians together. And that's what got me into interfaith. And it was when I was presenting on that that I met Stephen, who's here, and he was setting up the Living Interfaith Church. So these things go together very well. We connected over that. And uh, so I think our work here and bringing people together from different religions really works well with compassionate listening. So if anyone's interested, let me know. Um, and then finally, we're very lucky that Sukhvinder Korvinning has been working with us. Uh, those of you who've been coming to the meetings have seen her a few times. She's from the Sikh tradition or the Sikhi tradition, as she says is the more traditional name. And uh, she's been leading our monthly meditation sessions. So I've started recording those and putting them on our website and on YouTube. And uh, the last one was really powerful. It was um, a deeper one of her Wahe Guru uh, meditation. It was really beautiful. And I know she'll be doing another one later this month. Uh, it's the last Tuesday of the month from seven to eight. So it'll be August 25th. And I never know which kind of meditation she's gonna pick, uh, but every month she'll be leading those at the end of the month. And the idea uh, is that way we can come together both if we wanna learn more about each other's traditions with Harold, or if we wanna have more time together in a contemplative space with Sukhvinder. That way we have the ability to do both. So that should be really fun. 
Does anyone have anything else they'd like to share? Uh, that way we can all hopefully attend each other's things and support each other. So feel free to share. Yes, David. Kathy, all I did is I put the one page notice about compassionate listening in the chat. So it's a word if anyone wants to, to download that so they have it handy. That's great. Thank you. David's been helping. He's much more business oriented like Eloisia is than I am. So I'm very grateful that he's like, you know, you kind of need photos. You shouldn't just inundate people with text and things like that. So thank you so much, David. Any other announcements before we do our opening prayer? Okay. Well, thank you. Let's just come into silence. We see signs of summer's passing in golden leaves, shortening days, misty mornings, autumn glow. We sense its passing in rain that dampens, winds that chill, harvest bounty placed on show. The goddess who brings forth both green shoot and hoar frost, sunrise and sunset. We bring our thanks for seeds that have grown, harvest gathered, storehouses filled, mouths fed. And as the earth rests through winter's cold embrace, we look forward to its reawakening when kissed by spring's first touch. Bruce and Cheryl. Sorry, our controls here just disappeared. There we are. For the promise of harvest contained within a seed, we thank you. For the oak tree within an acorn, the bread within a grain, the apple within a pip, the mystery of nature gift wrapped for us to sow, we thank you. Now if you'll join me in a passing of the peace. I will try to unmute everyone. And this is where we just say something like, peace be with you, with you as well. Salam alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Peace be with you, everyone. Welcome. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. Peace be with you. Blessed be. Peace be with you. alaikum. Peace, brotherhood, and love to all. Peace and love to everyone.
Thank you so much. Circling, circling together, we are singing, singing a song. This is family, this is unity, this is celebration, this is sacred. We are spiraling, spiraling together. singing over the rainbow. This is harmony. This is community. This is celebration. This is sacred. We are circling, circling together. We are singing. Beautiful. What a great song. I want to keep singing. That was awesome. Thank you. Now, if you'll join me in our joint affirmation, we come together in peace. We sing together in joy and with love. We worship together in one house, a house with names beyond number. Our paths are many, our beliefs are as leaves, and the tree that we cleave to is nourished by the light of compassion, justice, and mutual respect. May our lives, our beliefs, and our actions help to bring about the world of love we all seek and let it begin here. Thank you. Now we're just gonna take a few minutes to pray in our own way, in our own homes. I think given the occasion of Luna Sta, uh, that we should pray for abundance. This is the time of the harvest. This is the time when all that we have worked for, there's a culmination of that and we get to bring in and just enjoy this abundance with our friends. So let's pray and meditate now just for a few minutes in silence uh, for abundance.
Thank you. Bruce and Cheryl? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bruce and Cheryl. I'm quickly going to put the donate page for the sanctuary in the chat. Uh, just this is when we normally pass around a basket. And since we cannot actually do that, I could try to throw a basket towards the closest one of you, but I don't think you get there. So we will do that instead. And I know some of you have been donating and I so very much appreciate that uh, so that we can pay for our fantastic musicians and our other programs in Eloisia the other folks who are helping us with this. So thank you. At this time, I'm very delighted to turn this over to my dear friend, Patrick. Patrick's one of my favorite people. I make, uh, I'm not shy about this. He is so wonderful. And uh, I've known him for, my gosh, I don't know, like 10 years now, possibly, uh, from the very early days of the Living Interfaith Church. 
And I'm so happy he'll be with us now to share about uh, Celtic paganism and this Harvest Festival. So thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you very much, everybody, for inviting me. It's, uh, it's a real privilege to meet you all. Um, I, I don't have anything prepared because I tend to be uh, more spontaneous and I tend to make more sense when I wing it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, first, I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to ask if there's any other pagans here because I don't want to talk down to anybody. No pagans? Okay, that's fine. Um, I started as a Christian too. I was raised in Jehovah's Witnesses, which is more of a cult than an actual religion. And the definition that I've read about that is that you can tell whether you're in a cult by what happens when you try to leave it. So, you know, anyway, so I, I was raised that way for many years, but when I became a late teenager, I discovered paganism was a thing, which was cool. I really liked finding that out. And I began to read and study and there was no internet in those days. You had to go to the library and it was almost impossible to meet new people who shared your same um, ideas and, and faiths. So I was on my own for a very long time. Uh, when I turned 40, I suddenly realized I couldn't be a pagan anymore because I didn't worship a god and a goddess. I didn't realize that you don't have to do that in order to still be a pagan. So I became an atheist for about 10 years. I didn't follow any path at all except thinking and reading. And I was very antagonistic toward most religions, which was funny because I spent most of my life studying other religions. So you know, I was an angry atheist for a while, and then I, then I was an angry humanist, and then I was just a humanist, and then I had a crisis of faith, and I went to my good friend Stephen Greenbaum um, as my minister at that time and said, um, I need something more, but I don't know how to get it. I, I don't believe in a god or gods. I don't have a spiritual connection like that. And he said, well, maybe you should just try a practice. Just make yourself a practice to get into a habit of, of thinking about these things. And I thought I could do that. So I put together a tiny little altar that just represented the elements of the seasons for me. And that got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And now I have a whole dresser that's my altar, uh, which is amazing. Um, so I started studying particularly Celtic paganism because to me, and I'm not the only one who ever thought of this, so don't credit me for this. In order to understand anybody else's faith, you need to understand your own. You need to study it. You need to understand it. You need to get knowledge. Why are we doing the things we do? Why are we performing these, this ritual? Why are we worshiping this person or this thing or this deity? Why do we, you know, light the candles? Why do we do all those things? It, to me, it's not enough just to do it. I need to understand why am I doing it? Who told me to do it? Is, and that's, that's informed my entire study of paganism, is there is so much misinformation out there, just the same as in any other faith. And you have to call very carefully. Um, people still think I'm Wiccan. I haven't been Wiccan in decades, but you know, because the idea of paganism means Wicca to most people. And it, it's, it's not true. We have as many different varieties of paganism as, I don't know, there are insect species in the world. There's just something for everyone. So I decided to not only uh, specialize in the Celtic form of nature worship, but also to, to study my Irish roots. So I have gone back, I'm going back as far in time as I can. Um, to the Neolithic peoples, the Mesolithic and Neolithic peoples in Ireland to understand their traditions and what they did. Uh, it's almost impossible because the Celts left no written records. Everything we know about them was written about them by other people, by their contemporaries through a Christian or a Greco-Roman lens. So that said, um, I do celebrate the, uh, the eight traditional uh, pagan holidays the Celts only celebrated two seasons, not four, and they only celebrated four of those eight Sabbaths that we call them. And one of them is Lunasa. And this started very, very early. Excuse me, toast. Um, this started very early in time that 
the harvest is such an important thing for agricultural people. They have an entire myth about uh, this queen or goddess named Tatu, and she was the foster mother of the god Lu, for whom the holiday is named. She, uh, very little is known about her either, but what we do know is that the Irish celebrated her because she came to Ireland and cleared the land for agriculture. Then when Lou became king, he announced that they were going to have these games every year, the Talchen games, and they still do that some places in, in Ireland, but um, to celebrate Talcha, not Lou, but he honored her so much because in so doing, when she cleared the land, she died of exhaustion afterwards. And so that's, that's my understanding of the, of the real meaning of the Harvest Festival, is to celebrate the growers, to celebrate the people who make our food possible, the, the joy of harvest. You know, you watch those blueberries grow all year long, and then you go out and you pick them and you eat them, and it's joy. And that's what harvest is supposed to be about. So I'm not, I'm not criticizing Kathy because that's, that was a beautiful um, silence today, a prayer for abundance, but I got sidetracked by giving thanks for the abundance that I have. I, I have more than I need. And that's, that's, I have not harvested this year exactly what I had hoped to by the, by this time last year but I have harvested a lot of personal growth, like you, David. Um, there's just so much joy to be had that it's hard to stay bogged down in the labors, although we do get bogged down in the labors of, of um, sowing and uh, cultivating and reaping and everything else that we have to do in our daily lives um, on a spiritual basis, a material basis, emotional basis, and with our relationships. And uh, it just, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this harvest. I am grateful this year for the harvest. And I encourage other people too, to take time at this time of year, this is the first harvest, the grain harvest. And take a look at what you've gone through in the past year since this time last year in August. Everything that we've learned, everything that we've experienced, those are all things that contribute to our growth, to our spiritual growth and everything else. So this talk isn't going very uh, like I I'd, uh, imagined it would, but I've been doing a lot of thinking over the last few days about Lunasa and what it means and a lot of reading about it. And that's what I came back with, is that it's, it's not a, a holiday that a lot of pagans celebrate either. They apparently, it's not as sexy as some of the other holidays. Uh, most pagans, especially the Celtic tradition pagans, they love Samhain. That's um, the holiday of, uh, around Halloween. It's to honor the dead. But of course, y'all get to dress up in witches' costumes, and nobody looks at you weird for having a pointy hat on, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of fun. But I mean, that's got to be the biggest holiday. But Lunasa is kind of overlooked. I mean, everybody's looking forward to the equinox, which is when we usually have our Thanksgiving uh, in September, and you know, instead of in November when it's freezing and all the plants are dead. But Lunasa is, is, is something that's going to be more visible to me. And as I continue to learn, okay, well, let me end, let me end up, wrap up with this. Um, if that's not too early. Okay. Um, I want to tell you a story about the God Lu. And he wasn't, he wasn't originally a God. He was a warrior of the early Irish people, the ones that came before the Celts, according to the Celts. And the high kingship was already established at the court of Tara in Ireland. And so there was a king there, King Nuda, and um, his, his, his kingdom was completely walled around, of course, fortified and everything else. And young Lou shows up full of, full of braggadocio, and he, he, wants to, he wants to come into the city and see the king. And the guard says, okay, wait, 
what can you do? Because everybody here works. Everybody has to have some sort of skill. And he says, oh, well, I'm a blacksmith. The guard says, well, we already have one. What else have you got? Well, I'm a, I'm a harpist. Oh, we already have the best harpist in, in the land. And, you know, we don't need you. Well, I, I can, and he went through this whole list. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And every time he was told, we already have one. We have several, we have too many. So finally he said, okay, go and ask the king if you have anybody who can do all those things, because I can. And the guard was kind of befuddled and he went away and he came back and he said, come on in. And that's how Lou got into Tara to see the king. And one of his epithets is uh, Lou Samildanach, which means uh, the master of all skills, the many skilled. And so I was thinking, I can't remember who was speaking earlier. I'm sorry that I have forgotten this about doing more things and being able to do several different things. And I'm sorry, I, I really can't remember what that was about. But that put me in mind of the story that not everybody can do that. It's a blessing to be able to do that. We can't all be good at everything. So unfortunately, we're not God. So we get to, we have to pick and choose what we want to be good at. Oh, I did have a little prayer that I found in a book that I wanted to um, speak at the end. This is a tiny little pamphlet that I got on Etsy, and it's called Devotion Without Borders, Prayers for Polytheists of All Traditions. Now, even though I'm currently an atheist, I am studying the Irish gods and the ancient gods, because I, I want some sort of connection. And if I can't get that through the normal channels, then I will just act as if, and I will make offerings to these deities who are the archetypes of humanity and basically pray to my better half for the guidance and the strength and the wisdom that I require to keep living. So I, I do pray. I don't know if anybody hears it, but I do pray because it makes me feel better and it keeps me in mind of the things that I want to become and the things that I want to always remember. So uh, with that, I beg your pardon, I need a drink. It's just water. It's okay. I saved drinking for 5 p.m. Anyway, this is called prayer for one's patron deities. And this can also be a singular prayer for a single deity. It says, for the life that brought me to you, I thank you. For the rapture of knowing you, I thank you. For the heartbreak that opened me to you, I thank you. For the hunger that goads me toward you, I thank you. For your kindness and your hardness, for all you give and all you take, uh, sorry, take away from me, I thank you. For the death that will legitimate my life, I thank you. For all you were, are, and ever shall be, I thank you, my beloved. And I will end on that. Thank you very much for um, inviting me to speak with you. And I hope that um, many of you or most of you, whoever can, can join us over at 1130 at, at the, uh, the other social hour so that we can get to know each other better. Thank you, Kathy, for, for, for bringing me here. That was wonderful, Patrick. Thank you so much. That's excellent. I'm sorry, I know I have small children on me. As those of you who've been there in the service, you know, when I'm like trying to preach and I have kids on top of me. I That's remember great. now, it was Anara. Samir said she wants to be these five specific things. Well, Lou says, why stop there, right? <laughs> Maybe she's gonna be the next one in Tara. Who knows? <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bruce and Cheryl. Nope. There we go. One more song. Just a simple chant. 
feel free to harmonize as we go. Earth, my body, water, my blood, air, my breath, and fire, my spirit. Earth, my body, water, my blood, air, my breath, and fire, my spirit. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Let us all go now in love and joy and in giving thanks for all that we have and for these friendships and this beautiful community. Let us keep in touch with one another, be here for each other. And if we can, let's just remember our connection to all things, including the animals. Amen. Okay.